like a wave. I mean, I think that's perverting the truth, all right? They're creating a pattern you would expect from waves interacting, not particles going through a slit, individual particles going through a slit. Um, and then when you... Okay, and here's another thing I've been mentioning to you before. Um, the um, tunneling. This is another way that electrons behave like waves. Okay. What happens is that if you throw a particle at a barrier, let's say you throw an electron at a magnetic barrier, <clears throat> um, or you, uh, if we're to use a metaphor of a larger thing, you throw a ball at a wall. All right. The um, there we go. Screwing around with that. <coughs> a particle will either go through that barrier or be bounce off that barrier or be reflected, based on how much energy you send it at the barrier with and how strong the barrier is. And that's it. You know, we can ignore the case where uh, you you do just at enough energy, but if it's a more than this amount of energy, it'll go through, and if it's less, it'll, it'll be bounced back. That's the way a particle works. But waves act different when you throw them at barriers. When you throw a wave at a barrier, some of it goes through and some of it is reflected, okay? And the, the strength of the barrier changes how much is reflected and how much goes through, but some always goes through and some always is reflected. So, like, when you throw the ball against the wall of your room, if you throw it hard enough, it goes through. If you don't, it bounces back. But if you play music or make some sound in that house, some of the wave does get through. It's muted. Most of the sound bounces off or is absorbed by the barrier, but some of it will get through because it's a, it's a wave. The sound doesn't have enough energy to break through the wall either. It has less energy than the, than the ball probably does when you throw the ball at the wall. But some of it gets through anyway because it's wave. And this is how tunneling microscopes work. When an atom holds on to a, an electron, it does so with a particular energy. And if you pull on it with a magnet, then if you pull with a strong enough magnet, the electron should get ripped off. And if you don't, then they shouldn't get ripped off. But what happens is if you pull with just enough so they don't get ripped off, the fact is because it's a wave, some of the wave does get pulled out. and that turns out to mean that there's a probability that you will pull off an electron in this case, even though the energy is not enough to do so. Okay, so that's another case where electrons behave like waves. Not happening. The particles aren't turning into non-particles, turning into wave, okay, and then the wave goes through the two slits. Okay, and then the wave somehow turns back into a particle at the end to hit the target. I mean, that's not happening. The energy isn't being converted from a wave back into a particle again. All right, so it's no way it's two particles interfering with each other. If you shot two particles through the slits with detectors on so they would act normally um, at the same time, uh, they would not end up at the end target looking like a wave because two singular particles cannot behave like a wave they don't interfere with each exactly yeah no and so the point is that the, the electron is always a wave okay so here's a diagram there's actually two screens in this don't let that confuse you in the first one you're getting straight wave fronts like waves coming into the shore uh, ocean waves you know where they're basically straight you know it'll be like that if waves start out in this ripple but very very far away those ripples you know, seems straight. So, for example, the waves coming from stars come to us basically straight, as you see on the left of this diagram. They hit the first screen. This is the most important part. When a particle hits a screen, it either hits the screen or it goes through the hole. But when a wave hits a hole, depending on the width of the hole, it starts to radiate out ripples, a cone of ripples, okay, as shown there. Now, if that cone of ripples, that is like its own waveform. And when it hits the second screen there, and there's two slits, each of those starts a cone of ripples. 
that's the sense in which a wave can be broken in two because you can take this one cone and turn it into two cones of ripples. Okay, you can't do that with particles. Now when you have these two cones of ripples, they overlap. And their overlap causes a pattern on the screen shown on the far right. Where you see the white, you know, that is where these ripples would be, you know, brightest if you take the cross section right there. And where it's sort of that reddish part for a reason I won't go into, but then it's less likely. And the weird thing is when that whole wave front, all of this complicated thing, hits that screen, you don't get this pattern of waves because it's not a continuous smeared out thing. It's discrete, so you get a little dot at a time. And as you do it over and over and over, each wave front creates another dot, and you start to see the pattern, uh, the interference pattern, emerge. And that's the weird thing, is that when all of that wave front hits there, it's, it's, it's obviously hitting the whole thing, because we see it interfere, so we know it's there. And yet, only one dot appears. And what we don't know is why this whole wave front turns into one dot. And that's the point of the multiverse, is that the whole wave front is somehow in this uh, higher dimension, and we're just getting one cross-section, so we just see a dot of it. We see evidence that there's an interference pattern, but at any given instant, we just see a dot at a time. We only see the interference pattern when we play the odds and try this millions of times with millions of wave fronts. So another thing I wanted to say is the whole thing of an electron being a wave is not that the particle's moving up and down, no. This is more, this, this wave involves more dimensions than just the dimensions that we see, right? That's why there's the multiverse aspect of this wave. This wave is in some medium, some carrier that is uh, associated with the probability that we will see it in our, uh, whatever you want to call it, our physical space, our event space that we can detect. And it's the probability that we'll detect at a particular location in our, in our space. And everywhere we don't detect it, it would be detectable in another space of some sort, at least a potential space. You know, it might not be real. That the multiverse idea is that those are real spaces. It could be like more potential, like the potential energy of you know of a a, a ball at the top or a stone at the top of a hill. You know, it, it might be real only in the sense that there's some sort of tension there, energy that could be released and we perhaps see the only energy that is released. Okay, so that's fine, but that, that version is why they say, oh, the waveform collapsed. The point is the waveform reaches that screen as a waveform. We know because we've seen all the effects that we need to to know there was a waveform there before it hit the screen. Then it hits the screen, and we just see, then it becomes particulate. That's what the weird thing is. And I don't think anybody's explaining to... Re uh, pretending to really explain that. We have various ideas like the Copenhagen interpretation, many histories interpretation and stuff. But even in those, we don't know why we see one. Like the many histories explanation, why do we see just one then, if they all happen? So, anyway. Gary, I think your attempts to explain it are kind of interesting, but... Um, so the one thing, you know, you said that is correct is if it's a wave, it's going in all directions. It's rippling out. Yet when we see it, it's, it's a particle. That is the weird part. And it's not just weird for electrons that they turn out to be waves. It's also weird that light, which is a wave, and it should be rippling out in, in all of these directions at once, acts like a particle and just makes one dot at a time. I mean, the light should be coming in as a wave front, hitting an object, bouncing to the photographic paper, and making an image all at once. But it doesn't. This waveform comes, bounces just like that, and makes just a dot at a time. And it's not until all the dots come in that you see the whole image. And that's the weird thing. And that's the idea of why they say that there's this multiverse, is because then that would be a space for the, the waveform to exist throughout all the universes. And we are just one subset of that. So we just see a cross-section. It's as if there's a ripple going out, but we only see the cross-section. So we just see one part of that you know, wave. The wave front just intersects. If the wave front's a big circle, and we just see one point of the circle.